LAPD? What? If you're from my generation, you know the name Alexis Nyers. She was a star of the hit 2010 reality show on E! Pretty Wild, but she's probably most known for being the face of the bling ring. A group of young adults in Calabasas who broke into the homes of several celebrities and robbed them of around $3 million in cash and belongings. Sofia Coppola even directed a film, The Bling Ring, with Emma Watson playing Alexis herself. I want to rob. And today, I'm sitting down with Alexis to talk about it all. And trust me, every time you f I have to re record it! She does not hold back. Wait, so we're this, I'm gonna think I'm a, le a year older than you, which is crazy because I feel like you have lived the craziest life. I have. <laughs> like, it's like, when I think about it, like, I just thought you were older than me just because of the good life you've lived. And then I looked you up and I was like, oh my god, she's actually a year younger than me. So what? you were 1990? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And you're 1991? Yes. What, um, what's your sign? A Pisces. Oh, you're a Pisces. What are you? I'm a Gemini. Okay. Yeah. So wait, does that mean that you're kind of crazy? Well, I think Pisces are too. Okay. I think Gemini's, okay. Pisces, Scorpios. <laughs> That's fair. Are the craziest. <laughs> So whatever you want, do you drink coffee or not? I don't. Hi. Um, do you have a decaf mint tea? We don't have herbal teas. Like chamomile? No, we don't. The only one that we would have is we'll have at the moment. Oh my god, that's so sad. Grande decaf vanilla latte with uh, oat milk. I'll get a grande iced coffee, black but with the sweet cream foam on top. Thank you, that's all. Matthew? Thank you. No, I'm fine. Well, thank you so much for taking the time thanks. today. Thanks for having me. If I had told myself when I was watching your show back in the day that I would meet with you for my own YouTube show, like, <laughs> I would never have believed it. I'm glad to do it. And I watched the video that you sent me a link of and I loved it, so. Thank you. I think that Pretty Wild is like one of the most iconic one season shows that ever existed. <laughs> Do you still get noticed on the regular? No, I mean, occasionally someone will come up to me and be like, I loved your show. But no, not for the most part. You still, to me, I could hear your voice and know because your <laughs> voice is exactly the same as it was in the show. It is very, yeah, it's the same, like, I agree. I could hear that voice and be like, oh my gosh, that, that's Alexis, oh my gosh. I'm a valley girl through and through, born and raised in California. Everyone's like, you sound like a Kardashian. I'm like, this is just the way we sound. So when you were that age, were you wanting to be famous? Because you guys were on track to be like the next Kardashians, essentially. Yeah. I mean, it's like one in a million shot. You're going to get your own reality TV show. Yes. And so when we got picked up, I think it was kind of, it was a shock to all of us. Although we had been manifesting it for sure as a family. The secret. Uh, we would we were using our tools from the secret. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a visual board of people who are demonstrating good character. I mean, we had been saying affirmations daily down to the dollar amount of what we got paid. Really? It was that we were making $150,000 a year and like that was what my contract was. Were you saying in an interview, which we'll get into, how you spent all your money on drugs? Yes. But then I was thinking- There was like, not a penny left by the time that we were done filming. Cause I, originally I was thinking like, I thought you didn't make that much money in reality, especially the first season, but I guess clearly you guys did. I will say that reality TV back then was different than it is today. I don't think you would probably make that. Have you watched your show? Don't lie. I've seen several episodes. I haven't seen the same, the, the season all the way through. Tess and I got discovered by our eventual co-producer Dan Levy and Dan was like you girls are hilarious you should film a sizzle reel and let's see if when we pitch it if there's any traction pretty much right away a and E and E were very interested it fell into Chelsea's lap and she was like let's go for it When was the first time that you tried a drug? And how old were you? I started using around 12. Oh my gosh. I was really young. Drugs and alcohol were just really normalized in my household. My dad was an alcoholic. My mom smoked a lot of pot. And it was kind of one of those things where it's like, if you're gonna use, use, use in the house. Like, <laughs> yes. know, just, just use here and- That's like, daughter, here's your, here's your yeah, Adderall. It, so every morning I give the girls Adderall. Girls, it's time for your Adderall. 
because of the amount of trauma that I endured in my early childhood, by the time I was 12, I was just ready to escape. Like I just couldn't take the pain of my environment anymore. So it started with just warm beers from my friends' garages that I would steal from their parents. Oh my gosh. And then eventually, is that that restaurant? I hope not. Oh no. We're gonna have to move. I really do believe that like the root of all addiction for the vast majority of people have experienced multiple forms of early childhood trauma. When that happens, it affects the way that your brain develops and it affects the way that you view your safety and security in the world. Couple that with like a lack of coping skills because you're just young and you don't have them to deal with those stressors and that trauma. And of course you're gonna use drugs, alcohol, shopping, sex, unhealthy relationships, whatever it might be, to cope in an unhealthy way. And so for me, I started using um, drugs around 12 and also sex, shopping, <laughs> all of those other things. By the time I was 16, I was fully addicted to opiates, heroin addict. After my second arrest, it was like, you're either gonna get sober or you're gonna die. It wasn't like I wanted to get sober. It was like, I don't wanna go to prison for six years and I <laughs> don't want to keep killing myself every day. And at that time, was your family concerned, like stepping in and telling you you need to get help or what was that like? Yes and no. My drug use when I was on the show got really bad and my mom certainly had some concern. However, when the the identified patient or the black sheep in the family gets better, the whole family usually falls apart because they're all pointing their fingers at her. She's the problem in the family. There's nothing wrong with me. I have no part in this. It's like there's, there's like a mirror back it, in them now. Yes. And so while I think she did want to help me and she loved me and obviously she's my mother, she doesn't want to see me suffer like that. She also, and she admits to this, that she was a narcissist. She was so dysfunctional. She was an awful parent. These are all things that, like, we talk about now. And, you know, we do family recovery together. And we help other families uh, with their loved ones. And my mom, thankfully, like, uh, you know, it took a couple of years into my sobriety. But she got her shit together, Good. right? But at the time, no. Like, I don't think anyone really, I don't think Tess wanted me to get better because... I was, even though Tess was as bad as I was, she wanted me to stay the with the spotlight on me because it took it off her. It's so interesting watching the show again with a fresh perspective and knowing what was happening behind the scenes because yeah. at the time of watching the show, I loved your and Tess's dynamic. You seemed so fun and like you got dressed up yeah. and on cute dates with boys all the time together. And like now looking at it, I feel like was it a toxic relationship in terms of you guys enabling each other with drug use? Yeah. Tess and my dynamic was extremely codependent. It really was not healthy at all. Looking in, it's like you seem so fresh faced and like just so like I would have never thought that you were dealing with this. And it's like she seemed kind of like the older party girl. And it's like, did she kind of introduce you into this world? Was she a bad influence on you? I honestly don't love talking about Tess. We don't have any communication right now. Really? Yeah. If you were to ask anyone who grew up in our town if Tess was a good influence on me or anyone else the answer would be no that being said I don't blame her for my addiction I don't blame I take full responsibility for my life and my part I love her so much still to this day recently something happened that was so awful that I would have never expected to transpire where I just was like I have to walk away like, how this long is ago was this last spring but you don't you don't talk about that situation I can't because it's already known that there's a Netflix documentary that's coming out and it had to do with something in there and I can't speak about I can't like, wait. the details of it. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. So I want to talk about the bling ring. Mm -hmm. Oh, Alexis, was you part of the, uh, the bling ring? I tried to rob my house. Honestly, the bling ring to me is like one of the most iconic pop culture incidents of my generation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Sofia Coppola directed a movie about it. And did you watch the movie? I've still not seen the movie. How everyone have you not seen it? Because everyone always says, 
do you, have you seen the movie? No, because it's based off of an article in a book written by a woman who like completely fabricated a story so that way it's sold in LA and Hollywood and throughout the world. It's not at all factual. Oh my gosh, well good for you. I could never, if I knew a movie was being made about me, I, would just, I would, even if I never admitted at 1 a.m. in the morning, I'd be up watching no, it. No, and you know what's so annoying is that my partner Evan purchased it to try to watch it and now it's on my fucking Apple iTunes. And every time I open up movies, it's like there in you, my movie. Do you think you'll ever just watch it? I really doubt it. I have had zero desire so far. That movie was made almost 10 years ago. And I just, yeah, I just can't foresee myself sitting down and watching that. Do they contact you about it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like did Emma try to contact you to try to talk with you and interview you or like get... No. Meets? Sophia and I had a sit down meeting. We had a couple meetings with them sold my life rights and so you made money from it. it yeah not a ton i think it was like around twenty thousand dollars hmm yeah i would have thought it'd been more yeah yeah so for the bling ring you kind of were at the face of it because you were famous already but you only were in one incident right Yes, Orlando Bloom's house. I mean, I've said this before, but it's so true. It's like, if you are trying to sell a story, and it's just like Nick Prugo and Rachel Lee robbing houses that, like, lasts for a minute. But this girl has her own reality show and whatever else. And that's a common um, misconception is, like, a lot of people think that I got my show because of the bling ring but i had already signed my contract before i even robbed the house producers must have been ecstatic i think they were like oh shit this is awful but also yes like that made it so juicy yeah looking back do you regret it or do you feel like that's all part of your story yeah i don't regret any part of it like do i feel bad do i have remorse of course however all of those things needed to transpire to get me to where i am today it's kind of iconic though honestly yeah i mean again it's it was a pop culture moment that that and I and I don't wish to change anything. It is the way that it is. So I guess I want to talk about your relationship a little bit because okay. my whole series is about queer people. Yeah. And you are so interesting to me because <laughs> are you married? I'm married. To a man. To a man. I've been married for almost ten years. So you were twenty when you got married? Yeah. Oh my god. Married when I was twenty. But you're also pansexual. I identify as pan. I really hate labels at this point. I love women. I don't love men. An individual man, occasionally, like, I love a, like, a, a woke, conscious, it tapped into his divine feminine man. Yes. Love that. Women, I love women. Mask women, androgynous women, trans women, femme women, I love women. And my first consensual, I say consensual because my first sexual experiences were not consensual. And like so many people who are in the LGBTQ community, when we've had sexual abuse, it can sometimes affect our questioning of our sexuality. It made me feel like my body wasn't my own and that it was to be used for male pleasure. And I had a lot of stuff I had to work through. But my first consensual sexual experiences were around the age of 12 or 13, which is normal kissing and stuff like that were always with girls and eventually with women i feel like i'm more gay than i am straight like you just happen to love evan i happen to love evan and occasionally since opening up our marriage i have been with other men basically about two years ago i was just like i can no longer be in this hetero marriage like i feel like i'm suffocating i am not expressing myself in the way that i need to my needs aren't being met these are not me needs that you can fulfill because i need to be with women and we started exploring, like, what could this look like? Did it start with, like, a, a threesome situation? We tried that, and it just became about me and the girl. I just, I'm very <laughs> much so top energy. Yes. And so I just basically fucked her. And like, I love it. <laughs> you know, it yeah. just. And he was like, all right, hi, guys. He was, like, in the mix, but it was very much so, like, I'm going to make you come. And so Good. we <laughs> yes. we did that. What's so interesting is I didn't realize that I was having sex with girls because I didn't learn about what having sex with girls was. Like if there wasn't penetration, then it wasn't sex. Then it wasn't sex. And so my problem with having a male, female, female threesome is that it often becomes about the The male. Okay, so you guys tried the threesome thing. It wasn't working for you. So then you decided you want to like start you dating other people. Yeah. And how did he handle that? Pretty well. Is he open too? Yeah. I think he started up just saying that he was open. I think he's leaning more towards Polly now. He's wanting to have emotional connections, whereas before he 
wasn't really seeking that. I'm just like, let's liberate and free ourselves and have amazing safe sex with whoever we want and amazing connections with whoever we want. I'm not saying that like this is for everyone. I know lots of my family members are like, I just don't think I could ever kiss a girl or whatever. And I'm like, that's for you. Yeah. But I love eating pussy. So there we go. And I don't. (laughs) (laughs) I just think sexuality is so much more fluid. And when we give it labels, it it suppresses that fluidity. I even feel like that for me, like it's like, I wonder if because I came out as gay, that then I'd never allowed myself to experiment with females. And then now I'm like, I don't like females, but it's like, I never let myself go there. So it's yeah. like, who knows if I would have not put that limit on me where if I would COVID be. If COVID weren't a thing, I would make out with yeah. you right now. <laughs> Perfect. It's fun to explore. And we need to get to a place where it's safe to explore. Do you have I, a girlfriend now? Don't have a girlfriend now. You did. You were dating we, a girl. Yes. We have decided to separate, which is sad, but really it was like a distance thing. She just lived so far. And she was Bronwyn's ex from Real Housewives of OC, right? (laughs) Yeah. She loves reality stars. I think she just loves married women. Like, that's her thing. And you have two kids, right? I do. And do they know about this? Yes. So they meet, they met Chris. So they, yes, Chris would literally come and stay at our house. And do they think she's just a friend or? No, they know that she was my girlfriend. My littlest, Dakota, came home from preschool and said, I have two boyfriends at dinner. And my oldest, Harper, goes, you can't have two boyfriends. And I go, well, hold on a second. Remember how we talked about consent and about, like, touching other people's bodies and our bodies and age appropriateness and consent and, like, all of that? And she said, yes. And I said, well, actually, if if two people consent to allowing the other people in the relationship to date other people, technically there's nothing wrong with that. And, like, you can go and date whomever you want. That's beautiful. And so it really was just this kind of, like, organic conversation that happened. It was far more in-depth than that. Obviously, everything's always age-appropriate. What a beautiful way to bring your kids up and it just seems so progressive and healthy and we're a very modern family we yes we don't comply to societal norms at all but it works for our family and for a lot of people it wouldn't work but for us it does i was telling you off camera i think that like you on paper seem a lot different than people i've had in my series just from your upbringing and your background but it's just interesting like you still struggle with a lot of the same things people in my series have struggled with, which is homelessness, sexual abuse, drug yeah. use, in and out of jail. It's like, on paper, you seem like a white girl who grew up with money, a celebrity, mm-hmm. fame. I don't know. And it's just like, we all share common stories in life, and there's commonalities between everybody, and it's just, it's truly yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's interesting, for sure. It's been a wild ride, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks I really appreciate me. you coming here and taking the time. Thanks like, for having me. Thank you very Thanks. much. Yeah, that was so fun. Thank you. Okay, we talked for so long, but did you have fun? I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't run you too much, right? Oh, my God, no. It's great. Okay, cool.